Deanna Maurice's weekly craft and lifestyle content. Of course we can. Hey guys, thanks for watching. So before we get into this tutorial, I would like to let you know that I will be uploading a special video in regards to exactly how I created the SVG file for this particular upload. Now I have created SVG videos in the past, however I would like to start teaching you guys how to use more tools in your Photoshop to create better SVGs and more complex SVGs that look a little bit more interesting. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and click the link so that it will direct you over there. So a few quick reminders when you are working with iron-on. Please before you cut out your iron-on, make sure that your material is face down and the shiny piece is touching the sticky part of your Cricut mat. As well as when you press continue to go ahead and cut out your image, there's a little button on the left hand side that will say mirror. You want to make sure that you click that so that it will flip your image as well as turning your dial to say iron on so that you will get the correct pressure and consistency to cut your image out perfectly. So what I'm doing here, now that my image has already been cut, I'm just weeding out the excess material that I no longer need. And this is made a lot more simple if you do have a weeding tool. They're relatively inexpensive at your local craft shop. In this video, I am using the Cricut Iron On in the color Raspberry. And I picked this one up at Michael's. So once you're finished weeding everything, flip it over and make sure that you haven't missed any spots before you iron it down. Hey there, just a quick reminder, if you want to join the crew, go ahead and hit the subscription button as well as give this video a big thumbs up if you are enjoying it. And last but not least, click the bell so you can be notified each and every time I upload. Okay, now we're gonna flip our image over so that the shiny side is facing us and the sticky side is facing the surface that you want to adhere it to. Place the image exactly where you want it to be. You can move it around until you iron it on. There are different tools on the market that can help you line up your images uh, so that they're nice and straight, but I like to eyeball them because this process works for me. One thing that I will say is I put my iron on a medium heat setting and I pressed it out but this apron was actually made out of polyester so it took a little bit longer for the iron on to adhere to the material. In the future I will invest in a Cricut Easy Press or something of that sort that can kind of help me and give me guidelines of exactly what uh, setting to put the iron on to allow the process of transferring it over to be a little bit easier. So after ironing it for a while, I decided to go ahead and try and peel it off. However, it wasn't fully adhered yet, so I had to go back in with my iron and iron it on just a little bit more. So this is exactly the problem that I was just telling you guys about, why I do think it would be a good idea to invest in an easy press. Even though I had a little bit of difficulty with the material, I absolutely love how this apron turned out. And I'm going to be sharing with you all how I replicated a similar image on a t-shirt for my daughter. 
and this was a 100% cotton t-shirt that I picked up at Michael's. Here I'm just warming up the section and then I'm going to be repeating exactly what I just showed you guys in the previous clip for the apron. As you guys can see here, I kept this clip in real time so that you could see exactly how long it took me to glide off the backing once the image was fully adhered. So I truly hope that you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. Um, and remember that I will be uploading a new video each and every day until Christmas, which is December 25th. So I hope to see you guys back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. promptly. You guys have a wonderful day and remember to always stay blessed and always have good vibes. Bye.